Party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. I'm just getting caught up, making sure I'm subscribed at all the right places I need to be subscribed and following all the people that I need to be following. Sometimes I think, Party Foul Steve, that I'm subscribed to certain people, and I go back. Like, I wasn't even subscribed to my own deal. That's sad, because That's, I, I it wasn't too long ago, and you you started following me on one of the social media, and I, th- I was like, I thought you already were. Well, I think I do, right? I, like, I, I think I'm already doing it. I noticed I wasn't following my own YouTube, and I probably subscribed to it 20 times, but, you know, the Gestapo that's out there, Big Brother's watching, probably unsubscribed me or something. And but you take it for granted because it's your stuff and you're seeing your stuff. So. I noticed I made sure because we have our Party Foundation YouTube channel that I went to my other two or three profiles that I have yeah. through Gmail and all, including, you know, like the kids and stuff. I made sure they were all subscribed to it. And yeah, you each account through that stuff. I have people all the time who want to talk about like, well, I've never podcasted. I don't know what that looks like. It's real easy. We post the links for you. You just go to YouTube and watch them. Yeah. Like, I don't even need. I don't really even send you to podcast locations anymore. And there's a lot of people out there who do listen to the podcast without ever watching it. But I mean, why wouldn't you want to see this? Look yeah. at this. Beautiful. I mean, why wouldn't you want to watch this? Beautiful studio. We got Hot News Natalie. We got Party Foul Steve. You know, Puppet Master and Candice are always in the house. Well, Candice's not in here now, but she's off doing actual work. Why wouldn't you want to watch this? Well, it's fantastic. I think, uh, I think like the podcast, people, you know, they get interested and they're like, I'd like to see. I want to see what's going on. I want to see y'all's face. I want to see what you look like. And that was the request we were getting with Beer for Brunch. And so we're like, we had to. There well, was... it was funny to me. I mean, you you get recognized out in public. We were in Des Moines, Iowa. You got recognized by your voice because you were having a conversation in a hotel lobby. And Such some a guy great walked voice, up. right? Yeah. It is. I'm like, damn, you're really listening close, bro. I know. I mean, if you're picking that out. My mom loves this podcast, not even because of me, but because of you. So she, Good. But she's, you know... She'll t- she's like 8,000 years old, so she's like, I am not. I don't know how to subscribe to anything. I want you to send it to me every single time, and yeah. I do. I just copy and paste the YouTube link and send it to her, and she gets to watch it, and yeah, she They're loves pretty. it. So make sure you're following the people. That's the only way you can fight censorship is the only and you got to share stuff. Somebody asked me yesterday, how do we fight the censorship stuff? Look, the platforms are there. I use Instagram. I use Facebook. I use YouTube. I use Twitter. Love Twitter. Love, 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 love it because it's a constant shit show on there. And the, the reactions are just immediate. Like, you just know instantly how people feel about things. And then I'm also on You Do, which is Y-U-D-U. The, you you want to talk about free speech stuff. Slow growth, but it's growth nonetheless. Get on You Do. Uh, there's an app for that. Get on MeWe. Get on um, All Social. And get on Parlor. Get on all those things. And Parlor sounds, that sounds weird to me yeah i don't know why. well not the kind you're thinking of oh, it's okay. p-a-r-l-e-r not like the room you go into and pick out a girl steve oh, okay okay that's what i was <laughs> you're not in korea that. anymore like, my friend yeah go to watch chad.com and you get it all you just find it all you go get your you know your unapologetic patriot shirt i want to just keep selling the heck out of it i want steve to actually I, work okay so go to watch chad.com get it join the club get your coin your silver your uh, coin crew club it's party time mom right there bam ounce of silver you never be broke you'll always have twenty dollars in your pocket and you get discounts if you bring not, them to the show or i'm not wearing one of your shirts today so. texas gun experience we're just yeah. repping everything out here but i want I'm you to saying. more than anything i want you to get two books i want you to read them i want you to get 100 <laughs> deadly skills and i want you to get right kind of crazy and they're written by my buddy sitting here in the hot seat clint emerson Clint Emerson, retired Navy SEAL, a dude who's done all kind of crazy stuff in his life, and you need to read about his exploits, and we always love having him on uh, and getting his insight on things. So welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, oh, as usual. Yeah. Good seeing everyone. Oh, hey. yeah. You get all of his fun stuff, <laughs> like my, uh, look at my knuckles right here. Bam. Violentnomad.com. You can get his T-shirts as well as his you, if you want to sub- survive the end of the world, just go to violentnomad.com. He, he's right. got everything you need. And then 100 Deadly Skills, at 100 Deadly Skills on the socials. Fun stuff. Steve, you ever been shot at? Uh, no, I try not to. Have you ever had that? I mean, you ever been near a situation where it's like the bullets are flying and it's... I've been near some situations that I, I was not comfortable with, but I've never been directly shot at. Yeah, I, a BB gun, but you I've been, know, yeah, I've been shot with a BB gun. Kid, it's a different kind of deal. But I don't think anybody in the room except Clint has probably been shot at. Have you been shot at? I mean, can't believe you wouldn't even ask me. No, not asking you. <laughs> no, I not haven't. At, no. Clint's been shot at, mm-hmm. and and Clint has shot at. 
That's <laughs> right. A little the, bit of both. Yeah, both, both the egressor and the aggressor. I don't even know what the right word is. But we're going to talk about surviving an active shooter situation. Of course, we know what happened up in White Settlement, Texas, a few months or a few weeks ago, I'm sorry, where uh, Jack Wilson uh, was able to take out an active shooter in the church scenario. You saw acts of tragedy and heroism happen within the space of about five or six seconds. You've done some stuff recent, some video specials with BuzzFeed, mm -hmm. and you've got different things that you talk about on, um, you know, in 100 Deadly Skills and different stuff that you've talked about online as well as in the books. Let's talk about that. Because a lot of times folks might find, you'd, you'd hope to God you never find yourself in that scenario. That's right. But yeah, you, you don't, might. Yeah, you don't want it. It's, I, a lot of skills that I promote, um, I always caveat it with, hey, these are things you want to know, but I hope you never have to use, right? right? But it's better to know it than not, especially if crisis comes knocking. So my day job is really just helping corporations um, build out policy, workforce training modules, and tools to uh, keep them safe in the middle of crisis. And obviously one of the more popular things I get pulled in to help with is active shooter. Mm -hmm. um, 100 Deadly Skills really was just a uh, an entertaining and informative way to get you know your average person to start adopting some skills and some thought process. So if you know the bad day a uh, bad day comes knocking, you'll be ready for it. Um, but really what it is is it's it's a boiled down it's a entertainment version of what I do for corporations every day, mm -hmm. and um, so when you talk about active shooter, I think there's some <coughs> there's some big stuff people should always remember, and that is uh, when you hear the the mantra "run, hide, fight," uh, that is like federally approved, and that's what you're going to see mostly out there. And there's some other acronyms, but um, I try to stay away from acronyms because most people won't remember it under stress. Um, but run, hide, fight, not necessarily in that order, right? It's based on the situation. It's based on your own capability. And then, of course, the environment that you're in certainly dictates what you're going to do. Um, so if you have the opportunity to run, then you should. You should always increase distance from the target um, because then that increases survivability at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Um, and when you move... Uh, we hear the run, but nobody really defines it. So I try to let everybody know, like, look, it's not, you see a herd of people go running by, you're going to have this urge. It's called the mammalian reflex, where you kind of want to run with them, right? It goes back to more more primitive days. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of put that in check because those people may not be running in the right direction. And there's a phenomenon when you talk about sound propagation. If I were to fire off a, a round um let's see on the next stage over or set you would think it's coming from behind us mm -hmm. right but the reality is is we know which way it's coming from but you only know that because it would be a training situation um so that's why people inadvertently run towards gunfire especially in malls um business buildings because that's the the sound of gunfire indoors becomes almost omnidirectional. You can't tell where it's coming from. You just know that you heard a big bang. Um, as much as that hurts us, it also benefits us because a lot of these guys, when they pull the trigger for the first time and start killing people, that first bang makes them go deaf. Mm. And you can use that to your advantage, right? The other thing it does when they go into that mode is tunnel vision, right? So they're only seeing exactly what they're looking at. And you brought up a great point. When Jack pulled his gun, took his time, put that dude's heads in his, his head in his sights, and from 50 feet away put an accurate round through that bad guy's skull, it shows the bad guy had no idea. He didn't mm -hmm. see it because he's only seeing this much. And as soon as he pulled the trigger, he's deaf. So a lot of times with these active shooters, even though they have a gun, doesn't necessarily mean you're at a disadvantage, right? It just means there's 330 degrees around this person, especially if they've got tunnel vision, and then they're deaf after they pull, pull the trigger. You can take advantage of them in a lot of different ways. So that guy didn't even see that bullet heading his, head his way, even though he should have seen peripheral, yeah. right? If you look at the footage, Jack was in, in line of sight of the bad guy and uh didn't even know it was coming so i always try to tell people hey you know it, it, as soon as those shots are fired you know just take a second look listen and smell 
make sure you're going to go the right direction um, and and really use your eyes, right? Trust your eyes, question your ears in that, in, in that moment and make sure you're seeing what's real and not hearing what you think is real. How often do you think people just kind of immediately freeze because now I'm in that situation and panic and fear just uh, envelops you and just takes over and now you're just stuck in that situation and like, mm. and before you answer that question, before you answer that question, yeah, think about it for a second. I'm going to do, let's pay some bills, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> right. if you listen to the show right now, you're probably paying too much for your sales service. Let me tell you something. You got to get Patriot Mobile. The worst part that's out there is that major cell phone carriers, they donate millions of dollars to left-wing causes. So abortion, open borders, and a whole lot of other things. And let's talk about reliability. Did you know that all the carriers out there use one of the same four towers? So what's the difference? Well, I'm going to tell you. Patriot Mobile is the only company that donates a portion of your bill to support conservative causes, religious liberty, life, and the Second Amendment starting at $25 a month. Patriot Mobile plans come with unlimited talk, text, and the same reliable nationwide service with no hidden fees. This year, probably more than at any point in history, we need to stick together. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash Chad, and when you use the offer code Chad, get a free month of service when you open a new line. You can also call their U.S.-based customer service team. 877-367-7524. So vote with your dollars. Vote with your wallet. Support companies fighting for your values and save money. PatriotMobile.com slash Chad. 877-367-7524. Do you think that fear just takes over people? Like, like all of a sudden you go into brain fart, brain freeze, and you just, boom, you just become jello? I think for the average person, fight or flight certainly kicks in and, uh, and if they haven't been in a whole lot of crisis situations in their life, which most people don't, then they haven't sensitized their brain uh, to react properly. So, you know, we all know the guys that if you, you know, throw a fake punch, they'll hit you right back, right? Yeah. So they, they're definitely, you know, wired for the fight. And then you've got people where you, you know, you juke a move at them and they just stand there like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen, right? Yeah. So... I think it's a lot on your life experience and things you've been exposed to really drives it. But if you are a person that is not putting yourself in harm's way or been in some crazy situations, then the best thing you can do to train your brain to react properly is that when there's nothing going on, you get out there, let's say you're at a restaurant, you're at a coffee shop, you're at home, and, and definitely when you're at work, you should be running scenarios through your mind on a regular basis, sensitizing, calibrating, and going through the decisions that you, the, the decisions you'll make mm -hmm. if that happens. That way, now you've got all the decisions already made, and when something bad happens, you're saving time because all you have to do is act it out, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, fight <coughs> or flight is something everyone, every single person has to deal with individually based on, you know, what they've done, whatever they've been and what they've been exposed to in life. You know, anybody that spent any time, you know, these days you can't go into the range. You, <clears> you go to up there to Natalie's place, you know, Texas gun experience. You go up there and, and they, you can hear the rounds popping off. And, you know, I feel there's guns. You're surrounded by guns. You're surrounded by rounds. You can hear them in the other room going off, right? But you feel safe in there. You don't expect anything. You don't ever, you don't ever hear of the, the mass shootings happening at the gun shows, right? It's, right. it's those kind of things where... Anyway, you're, you get accustomed to hearing gunfire the more you're around the range or you're out shooting clays or whatever you are. But if you're a kid, you grew up shooting without ear protection. Now you go up to their place, everything's ear protection. And you kind of oh, forget yeah. how loud that, that concussive and repercussive sound is of a Very gunshot. Very loud. Because you're right, it kind of deafens you all of a sudden. And if you you have ears like me, mine will ring for three days if I shoot without protection. Right. And indoors, it's, you know easily yeah. 10 to 20 times louder right without hear pro and you're inside yeah yeah you're uh you're gonna be deaf and i've had I, <clears throat> i've fired some rifles that a suppressor really makes a difference but for well, yeah the, but then i've had some that maybe not so much maybe it only low, lowers at about 30 decibels still pretty loud i mean like dropping a pretty heavy phone book on the ground and slapping it's yeah. still it's still making a sound and you know how are you going to react? You're sitting in the Waffle House, you know, you're eating your, you know, scattered, smothered and covered. 
and all of a sudden <laughs> some guy walks in and starts just opens fire on stuff. And we had the, you had the situation, what, it was a year or two ago where the, the guy mm-hmm. brought the guy down without a – he didn't have a gun himself, and he fought the guy. Right. Which he, is kind of one of the things. The guy had, I think, an AR-15. I think it was an AR, and he came in, started shooting, and uh, the the I, remember, I forget the name of that kid, but he uh, his exact words basically was something to the event of like, well, I didn't know what else to do but run at him. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, because he had no place to go. He happened to be where the doors he came in and where that guy was sitting. He was like, I just didn't want to get shot. You right. know? So he, he charged him, tackled him as soon as uh, I think he went to change magazine. So mm-hmm. I think that's another piece to take away is there's always vulnerabilities. And when you talk about hearing protection the only guy that went in wearing hearing protection was the el paso walmart shooting right he actually you know they had uh the the footage of him at his trunk of his vehicle or wherever and putting a hearing pro on getting his gun ready and going into walmart but once again whether he pulls the trigger and deafens himself with the first round or he puts hearing pro on he's already at a deficit and giving everybody else around him an advantage over him yeah because he's he's in it, it by all yeah. intents and purposes, deafening himself. Exactly. So yeah. it's a it's 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 something for everyone just kind of putting their back of their minds that just because they got the gun does not mean they have the advantage. And that's what I try to stress the most. And when you talk about the run, um, ideally you're running from cover to cover. You know, mm-hmm. you have two things you can hide behind. You have cover and you have concealment. And I always equate it to a vehicle. Cover is when you go and hide behind the engine block. The engine block is going to stop bullets, right? And it hides you. Mm -hmm. The trunk will not stop a bullet, right? But it'll hide you. Mm -hmm. And we have those options all around us. you got to either find your engine blocks or find your trunks. (laughs) But the goal is ultimately to get out of sight. And when you get out of sight, it's better to pick the cover over the concealment. And as long as you're picking these things ahead of time, then it's a no-brainer when you hear shots fired, you know? Is this going to stop a bullet if I flip it up and use it as a barricade? Probably not, right? That's like a a thin aluminum or something. But maybe the granite on that, if it's granite on that uh, bar or whatever that is, you know, you're finding dense woods and granites Mm -hmm. and metal that you can get behind. Um, You know, the pillars that are in, the structural pillars that we walk past every day, you become blind to them, but they're there, right? That thing's going to stop a bullet. And two, you never know. I mean, you you have to give yourself every chance because there's so many different directions I could go with this line of reasoning here. Mm-hmm. You take Mike Day. Mike Day goes into a house. He's 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 shooting bad guys. Well, then he gets shot. He gets shot like 23 times <laughs> and survives, Yeah. right, and still kills a few more guys before they drag him out, right. and he drags himself out of the house and still carrying bullets in himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this day, you never know. How do you get shot 23 some odd times? I think it was 27 times. 27 times, times yeah. and twice in the scapula and one in the ass. And, you know, I mean, and, and it's yeah. like crazy. And then he still manages to – so you have to give yourself every chance. And then, you know, do you run a straight line? Should you should you make yourself a little more – because people with a handgun aren't tend to not be that accurate. No. You you and I both know anybody with a handgun is going to be far less accurate. Yeah. And if they've got a rifle, they're probably still not that great. They're getting mm-hmm. lucky. And that's where I say that herd, let the herd go. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be a part of it because that's, uh, you know, literally a bigger bang for the buck for the shooter is to just shoot into a big pile of people. Um, the herd also, when it hits channelized points in any environment, whether it's doors, a turn in the hallway, that's a spot where... Everything comes to a screeching halt when you're part of a big group of people, especially when they're running. You don't want anything to do with it. It's better to stay onesies and twosies and just make your way, making good tactical decisions and just keeping an eye on that shooter and going the other way. If you take, and I know you were dealing with kids in in an active shooter scenario when it comes to schools like, for instance, Columbine. Mm -hmm. You look at the layout of Columbine High School. These kids are in this one room that's all glass. And your first thought, you, you know, you would think that people would say, break the glass and jump out. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's not the first response. Um, it should be. You know, it should yeah. be. Yeah. You know, even if it's a two story jump, jump out because right. you got a better chance of surviving a two story, you know, 20 foot fall than you do, you know, taking a round to the chest. Um, do you think it's the right mindset to lock yourself in that classroom and, and, and conceal yourself that way? Or are you just putting yourself more like a fish in a barrel type situation? I think there's there's a lot of answers to that. Um, in my experience so far, you know, when you talk about lockdown drills, 
that doesn't necessarily give the people the advantage that are hiding. It gives law enforcement the advantage, right? If you get all of your innocent bystanders out of the way, hidden, locked doors, that leaves the hallways and everything open mm -hmm. for a SWAT team to be successful against that shooter. And so lockdown <laughs> drills are very much pro-law enforcement, um, but not necessarily pro-survival. And there is a difference when we're talking about most of these shootings are a minute or less, mm -hmm. you know, and knowing that the shooter is probably going to eliminate himself long before law enforcement shows up. So I tell people, hey, it's a lockdown drill. That's great. Make sure wherever you wherever you go is not a dead end. So what's so it's really important to identify the dead ends because there's usually less of those. Right. So that's right. the closets, the bathroom. A dead end is any place that doesn't have another exit. It's also any place that doesn't give you the ability to barricade the door, mm -hmm. right? So bathrooms and closets and things of that nature have that usually don't have either one. And so you want to make sure you identify the dead ends ahead of time and know that when you go someplace to hide or you lock yourself in a room, you it's not that's not the end. That's not it's not over, right? It's lock, delay and deny that person and then you're still moving, right? You're constantly moving is the goal. So you throw a chair through a window, jump out a second story. It's better to break a leg to get shot in the chest, right? Yeah. So, and the odds are even 20 feet up, you know, you're not going to hurt too much. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to break anything. You yeah. go up to 30, 40 feet. Now you're probably looking at some broken something or other, but that's better than dying on target. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in, in our experience, when you none of this really relates to being an assaulter or the SEAL teams, uh, except for a couple of pieces, right? Um, any bad guy that stayed on target, right, usually isn't going to make it out of there. Mm -hmm. And we call that the X. So you want to get off the X as soon as possible. If we get ambushed, <coughs> our job is get off the X because the bad guy has determined that the X is the place where you're most vulnerable. It's the place where you have um, the most advantage, speed, stealth. There's a lot of piece, parts and pieces why a bad guy picks a place to attack. And whether these shooters here in America realize it or not, they probably are doing a little bit of a, a mm -hmm. process of elimination on, okay, where am I going to do this? It started with schools. Now we've moved to churches because they're assuming the schools are fortified. Now the churches have been done a couple of times. A couple of storefronts have been done. You know, the, these guys are going to slowly go, all right, process of elimination. What's the next place where I can have the most impact that they haven't thought about yet, that they haven't fortified yet? And so we need to be thinking that way, right? Next yeah. time you go to a big public place and you go, hmm, has there been a stadium attack? Yes, there has. Okay, so what has there not been? And that can help you understand how vulnerable you are in that environment. So you took the church shooting that happened here. Mm -hmm. So... Not only, you know, a lot of people were armed in yeah. that room. And now you have the live stream video of not only the shooter being taken out. And you have people all the time who get online. Again, you have the online experts. And they think, oh, well, that's exactly the gun owner we want around us is a guy who is a trainer and he's experienced and all that stuff. Well, I all of a sudden all these people start popping out with their guns after the fact. It kind I would think that would be somewhat of a deterrent. If I'm wanting, because it used to be, you go back to Columbine, those kids went in there, they weren't coming out. That was right. a suicide deal. They knew they were going to go in, lay as much waste as they could, and then they were going to commit suicide. These days, these people are taking them into custody. More and more, you're taking taking these people into custody, and which is a crazy thing. They're expecting to survive this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, that's, and that's you see the, El that Paso, the, the El Paso kid, yeah. 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 You would think that seeing that this many people are armed would be a deterrent. Do you think it is? Um, I think it may work over time uh, where a shooter may second guess himself the mm -hmm. next time he's going to, oh, well, I'm going to go do this. Well, wait a minute. There might be a room full of people <laughs> with guns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think over time, as long as we continue to get more positive results like this, you know, um, it's actually not unusual. I've worked with a couple of mega churches and they do leverage the congregation and uh, those that carry conceal become, you know, a team, if you will. And they work through the comms. They work through the identification piece so that they don't shoot each other, right? right. Everyone knows who's on the team. They all know each other really, really well. Um, and if an outsider comes in, 
blazing away, they're going to respond just like Jack did, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, uh, that's exactly how it's supposed to go. Yeah. You know, that's a great example of what should probably be, uh, highlighted more often. Cause there's plenty of people that definitely take, you know, carry conceal and, and win against bad guys every day. You just never hear about it. You don't it. hear about it. Right. It doesn't fit the narrative in a big way. And I hate to even say it like that, but it's just true. I mean, it's gotten to a point where it sounds stereo typical to say that, but it's true. There's a narrative out there and the mm -hmm. folks that want gun control, they don't want you to hear those kind of things. Mm -hmm. No, but you also, the thing you don't hear is if I go to the movie theater, there's going to be a 30 out six, there's going to be a 30 out seven sign on the deal that says, okay, you know, the three zero point zero six sign says uh, you can carry, but you get you got to carry it concealed. No mm -hmm. open carry here. Yeah. And then the, the three zero point zero seven is going to say none of that. You Nothing. Can't, you right. can't carry in here. Now, you and I tend to think if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> Exactly. So so now if I'm going to go the in there and get frisked, I don't really want to do a quarter million dollar fine and I don't want to do 10 years in prison cuz look at his face. I don't need to I don't need that uh in prison. But the uh but no, you know what I'm saying? But if a guy yeah. comes in there and like the the thing out in in Colorado and this guy comes in the theater and starts mm -hmm. shooting up, I would much rather be judged by a jury of 12 than carried by six, you know, if if I'm in that situation. Yeah, I I'm with you. I think if you're properly conceal mm -hmm. caring, then you never really have to worry about anything, right? Right. If you're one of these guys that needs everybody to know, well then, yeah, you're probably going to be the one that gets fined or goes to jail because you're brandishing the thing in some immature way. Yeah. It's really a, a mature mentality. And I mean, for me, we've gone and we carry concealed guns in other people's countries. Mm -hmm. That is illegal. That's illegal. But we do it because we're doing it on behalf of the United States government. So I kind of look at the same as when I'm here and I'm carrying conceal, uh, I'm not really worried too much about the laws because I know I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm not doing it because I want to be cool. Yeah. yeah, which that's a risk that a person's going to have to take on an individual yeah, basis. Exactly. What are you willing to live with on a situation like that? But there's got to be that responsible carry. It does, but, yeah. And I also look at it as like it's if I do get caught, it's first offense. I'll probably get off. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't have it. I don't have a record yet, yeah. but I'm I'm willing <laughs> to get one. <laughs> you look you look back at the church shooting, and none of those other people fired a single one shot was fired to stop it. Right. And those other guys, everybody else came in there trained, 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 and they knew that the threat was down. It was done, but they just kept. Their and you notice their training. They went high port. The one yeah. guy going closest to the camera, right. high port yeah. as he circled back around over to the guy. I mean, they they definitely did a good job in, in building that team and that train. They, they definitely trained together, you know, because yeah. the last thing you want really is that blue on blue situation where you got two good people, two good Samaritans, and then they all of a sudden turn on each other. And that's the worry, you know, for anybody who carries is is law enforcement going to know you're the good guy? Or are they going to think you're the bad guy? So let's talk about that. <clears throat> so let's say you're in a situation where you eliminate a threat. Okay. You're at the Walmart and you're shopping and some guy comes out and he shoots somebody and you're, you're carrying and you eliminate the threat. You know, law enforcement's on the way. Mm -hmm. How do you, what do you do next? Yeah. I mean, I think at least in Texas, the concealed carry class tells you exactly what to do. You know, you're going to basically clear and safe your weapon. We'll make sure the environment is safe first mm -hmm. and then clear and safe your weapon um, and make sure that when law enforcement does show up, you're identifying yourself, you follow their directions, which is usually going to be hands up. You know, as soon as they get this call, they're rolling in hot. Sure. So your job is, is, you know, you don't want it to look like a threat. You want to be the opposite. And uh, I think that's, to a certain degree, common sense. If you're a yeah. good guy, you're going to put all your stuff down on the ground. You're going to get on the ground. You're going to put your hands up and you're going to go through the arrest procedure that's probably going to take place until they confirm that you're a good guy. <clears throat> I've talked with the families of the folks that were involved in the shooting and I've gotten feedback from them on kind of post scenario of how they're feeling and what's going on. What typically in your mind, what do you think a person goes through after a scenario like that? I mean, you went to church on a Sunday morning expecting a typical Sunday morning. And the next thing you know, you had to eliminate an active shooter. Yeah, I think um, anybody who has to witness the any kind of violent crime or feel like, holy crap, that could have been me, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, that died there in the church. I think that's uh, 
the aftermath of that is a, is very individually based, you know. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of that PTSD, I'm sure, especially, you know, a lot of the folks in that church were, were older. Um, and I might be completely <clears> off base, <throat> but I feel like older people can handle that and process it a little bit better because they've already lived life and they've been there, done that. Yeah. And um, it's the younger folks that are probably have an issue maybe later on or, uh, but for Jack, I mean, he seemed pretty cool, calm, and collective in his interviews, and I yep. got to assume he's and, and plus he's a former FBI guy, so mm-hmm. I don't think uh, I don't think he's probably been affected too much. It's hard to say because everybody's different, you know. Um, and you get shot at it; it certainly, uh, you know, it wakes you up, and it's it's memorable. You're not going to mm-hmm. forget it. I encourage people go to the range, uh, get get proficient in your firearm, and get trained by somebody who knows mm-hmm. don't assume you know it all i mean i we go in there all the time i sit, i get with instructors at the range and I'm, and I'm always asking for you know show me what i'm doing wrong watch this i mean i'm i'm a dude but i'm not too proud to learn i mean i try to be teachable in these things well and yeah. i know at our range they're always offering classes there's one draw from holster class that's coming up they you know all kinds of classes which i thought was interesting and i definitely like to do that as well <laughs> You had mentioned the 30 out six, 30 out seven. My trainer, who won't admit that he passed me for my license to carry, but it's Jeff Kyle, said um, <laughs> that he said, when I see those signs, he said, you if it says don't carry, don't carry, I'm always going to carry. <laughs> he said, because I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. So let me tell you. That's right. Yeah. So let me but tell I you. I pray he has that gun. Like if okay. I were in a theater... That's why I hear the bullshit that comes from people like Elizabeth Warren, who says, "I don't, I'm not safe being around people with concealed weapons." <laughs> Horse shit, lady. You're you're surrounded, surrounded by people mm-hmm. with security with concealed weapons. Mm-hmm. So Wayne Kyle, Jeff and Chris's dad, I had the show at Grand Prairie, Texas. Four thousand people in the room, and he texts me and he says, "Are they wanding people as they come in the door?" Well, I had not been out front. <laughs> I'm in the back, and I said, "Well, I think they got metal detectors out there." And he goes, oh, shit, I'm going to head back to the truck. I said, drive around back. I'll make sure somebody lets you in the back. And I was happy that Wayne Heck yeah. was carrying. I mean, you know, it's Wayne Kyle. It's fi- he lost a son to to this, yeah. you know. And so I, I I want them in the room with me. I want to know that there's trusted people. I, I love being in this studio knowing who's in this studio. Yeah, you have to go through security and stuff like that. But even though you've gone through security to come in this building, there's some guys in this building who – there's some guys in this building, let me just say. And I, it makes me feel much better about being in this building when I'm here. Mm-hmm. And so I want to I want to get to one other thing. You can get in touch with Clint because I know there's folks out there with companies. You've got organizations. You've got churches. There's some big churches in Texas. I know right here, I mean, the man can make a living giving security training to, te- to churches in Texas. Uh, reach out to him. I know you can find him on Instagram and Twitter at 100 Deadly Skills. And then, of course, the, there's you probably have a more direct way yeah, for organizations if, if, and companies to get in touch with you. Definitely for organizations, whether you're small or large, it's through escapethewolf.com. Escape the Wolf started as a little book. Um, and then I got a call from the Wall Street Journal one day. It was like, hey, we want everything in this book taught to our journalists. And I was like, uh, I'm in the Navy. I don't know if I can do that. And so <laughs> it rapidly... Went from a book to a company. I turned the book into e-learning. We deployed it onto Wall Street Journal, Dow Jones uh, mm-hmm. servers, and their uh, and their entire journalist uh, crew uh, ended up taking that. Uh, and anyway, now we do everything from man-made. Your big five, really, when you talk about crisis, is man-made events, natural disaster, medical emergencies, um, cyber threat awareness, and then safe travel abroad. Yeah. And so we do policy, we do workforce education and tools to uh, make working environments a you know a much safer, secure place. Home invasions, last topic. Yeah. Home invasions, because let's face it, they might not just be coming to the, the local grocery store, somebody kicks your door in, it happens. Right. What's the best scenario to be prepared for that situation? I, and I know you got some little tips and tricks that I love, and <laughs> yeah, I've employed yeah. them at my house. Yeah, yeah. The tactical but, nightstand. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, I think you giving it some thought, you know, and taking a look at the hardware that's on your doors and windows is always a good place. Ideally, you want to keep bad guys completely away. And 
So good neighborhoods t- tend to do that, right? If you're mm-hmm. living in a good neighborhood, you know whether or not you live in a good neighborhood. Um, communicating with your neighbors um, is probably the best thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Everyone's looking out for one another. Um, and that's your outer perimeter, if you will, is just by knowing one another. Um, and as you kind of peel the in- onion, you get a little closer. You got, you know, security signs in your front yard, security, you know, stickers on the windows. That's a great deterrent, whether you have a security system or not, right? Um, <clears throat> bad guys that come for your stuff, bad guys that come during the day want your stuff. Bad guys that come at night want you, right? There's no other reason why they're coming at night. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really your two different situations. So if you want to keep them both, both, both kinds of bad guy away, uh, you need to be unpredictable. Bad guys do not like anything unpredictable. They don't want to get caught. So that means they don't want to get caught off guard. Um, so dogs are great, mm-hmm. right? Cause they're unpredictable kids, or at least the signs and symptoms of having kids that could be a skateboard leaning up, <coughs> uh, against the, uh, you know, right up at the front porch. If you don't have kids or, um, but when they think, wow, I can't keep track of this particular home, mm-hmm. they'll move on to the other one where, you know, everything, you know, they get up at the exact time, they leave by this time, and then they're gone for eight hours straight, and they don't come back home until a certain time. That's predictable, yeah. all right? So change up your pattern of life. Don't always leave and don't always come home at the same times. Don't always turn on the lights at the same time. Um, now, if they happen to get through all of your security features, then, you know, and it's the ones that want you, somebody coming at night, uh, don't turn on your lights. That seems to be a very popular reaction. Mm -hmm. You know the blueprint of your home better than anybody else. So let that, sorry, um, (laughs) trip and fall and stumble. her all the time. That's right. (laughs) Candace loves it when we say She does it. She, I can never get her to say it. <laughs> Beep. Anyway, let him trip and stumble Beep. and fall. Yeah. Right. Let I him trip go, and stumble and fall. I had to go clear Chad's house one night in the middle of the night when he was out of town. Yeah. And I was like, I, d- I thought I knew his house pretty well, but I did not, not know Not until it very dark, well. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I did check every room and every closet because yeah. doors and garage got left open or something. And or It was a door that got, it was open. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got the cameras. That's the thing. Cameras about my, are great too. You talk. I mean, it, a, it, an illumination passive. is a big thing. You know, I, yep. every now and then, my wife Jade, she'll be like, she'll go around like at night, she'll flip a light off or whatever. And I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, 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 Clint Emerson would not like that. <laughs> you leave that light on because they don't want to operate in the light. They want to operate in the dark. I'm, I'm talking about like when you go to sleep, like your exterior illumination. Is what I'm talking about. Exterior, you want to have like it should be Christmas all year around out there. Yeah, because the idea isn't. It's not for you. It's for your neighbors, right? Right. You want your neighbors to see somebody creeping around your house. And you want the bad guy to feel, I mean, I know whenever I was sneaking up to a target, if it was lit up, you feel naked, mm-hmm. right? You feel vulnerable. You feel like, well, I, I don't know what's good. You, you just don't know. And you want the bad guy to feel that way. Yeah. And so that's the goal of illumination on the inside and then completely dark on the inside. Mm-hmm. And then change up those times, right? You know, uh, when lights and stuff are coming on, um, you can harden your home. You know, there's great um, films and tents these days that were designed for hurricane, you know, Florida type homes Mm -hmm. that it can stop a, you know, a tree limb from coming through the glass. It's uh, so you can do the same thing about that. you like with bedrooms, you know, because I read I saw your video talking about that and I read some stuff you'd put out and I was like, dang, that's a great idea because you have bedrooms that are reasonably vulnerable to the outside if somebody just wanted to come up and take pot shots. That's right. Something through your glass, throw throw a brick through the window. You put that film on there. It's not going to affect them, right? Because the way they the way they put it on is it's not just on the glass; it's actually onto the frame as well. Mm-hmm. So it connects your glass to the frame. Yeah. So now it's like a it's like a uh, um, a trampoline. You throw yeah. some at, bounces right back at them. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so we could do this all day. It's fascinating yeah. stuff to me. It really, we really could because, but I don't want to give it all away. I, that's these are life saving things. I mean, your life is worth it. Get the stuff you need. If you really are trying to figure out how to protect your home, how to protect your family, how to protect yourself, how to protect yourself in public, and get not find yourself in these scenarios, God forbid you do. But if you do, be prepared for them. Hang out with Clint Emerson, and it's really easy to do because all you got to do is you get on his Instagram or get on you can find him on YouTube. You can find him on the BuzzFeed videos. You can find him. All over the place, 100 Deadly Skills. You can get on his websites and find him there. But 
the beauty is you got it in book form. You get it, you own it, it's right there. It's a reference guide. You've got it. There's 100 Deadly Skills, you're gonna learn how to put things up your butt and, and <laughs> hide, it's amazing. I mean, like, where else can you go? That's right. I mean, that's as that's practical right. as it gets right there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think having that, that <laughs> it's, it's a criminal mindset, really. <laughs> I, I I'd read Clint's books and I was like, he ain't no Boy Scout. Like, I, you tell me that. I mean, like, you know, mm-mm, mm-mm. no, you know, no. I, once it, I mean, I mean, you were, but once you're done, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I mean, I leveraged my uh, merit badges for evil, not for yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I did. That's what I started doing. You know, I got a son who's about to be eagle, and and I, my wife's always recruiting people who with certain skills that can go in and teach the boys stuff. And I said, I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. ordered ordered my new lock picking kit and I started brushing back up on my skills. I said, I'll give them a merit badge. Yeah, we'll I, have to do a class in here on that. Yeah, exactly. To teach all your following how to pick a lock. Heck yeah. And find themselves in trouble. Heck yeah. Clint Emerson, check it out. 100 Deadly Skills and Right Kind of Crazy. Those are the books you need to go get. Tons of stuff out there, st- tons of content. It will save your life. And uh, if you just want to waste some time and money, go to watchchad.com. Find me out on the road. <laughs> Come come in come enhance my life. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. Everett Washington going to be there next week on the 18th. Going to be in Rocky Mount, Virginia. Talking about crisscrossing the country, Steve. I know it. We have uh, to go in a full day early just to get to Virginia, right? Yeah, January 24th we're going to be there. Uh, I they they're back to the same old stuff. These guys in LA they're booking us crisscrossing the country yeah. all over the place. Like do y'all not need a own map. a globe? Own a globe because then we go right back to California, Visalia, Bakersfield, Reno. The end out the month of January, and then it's off to the races, all kind of things. We got uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, and then Tomball, Texas, and there's some other stuff going yep. on. I can't keep up with my own schedule anymore. Anyway, go to where YouTube's are, uh, YouTube's go to where podcasts are offered, uh, and leave us a five star rating and a good review. That's all we accept because that's all we're worth. And then, of course, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Chad Prather, it's real simple to find. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, the puppet master Mark. Y'all are such a pleasure. Wonderful human beings over there. Hot news, Natalie. You's nasty. Girl, you nasty. You know you nasty. I'm not nasty. Somebody get your husband on the phone. Mm, I'm a lady. Get your husband on the phone. <laughs> Let him know what you've been doing. Girl. Don't tell the truth. Don't tell Girl. the truth. Mm-hmm. I've been lying to Joseph for six months now <laughs> trying to get him to leave you. <laughs> Holy smokes. Party foul, Steve. We get on the road. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Check him out. Clint Emerson is the man. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Always a pleasure. No, thanks for having me. Absolutely, Love hanging out man. with you guys. We love y'all. God bless. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.